Good evening, everyone. I'm Akash Lopender. It's certainly good having you back with us. Abandoned and in panic and survival mode. What's worse is that the Dundas Town residents we spoke to on the ground say efforts to leave behind their bruised, battered, and really uninhabitable community has certainly not been a good experience. And some of them have been trying to do so for days. The response was too slow. In order to get anything happen, you got to do within the first, 40, first 48 hours or calm things should have happened and nothing really happened because we were talking with the minister and so forth that and he can't make decisions. You can't have people on the ground that cannot make decisions. You know, they, they direct us to come up to the shelter, the complex. We go up there and it's worse up there than where we actually are. Um, so no one's given no proper directives. Hungry, tired, weary, and I'm smelly. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's it. I mean, something has to be You can be take care of yourself if we get a NASA. So the problem is... Um, Getting to Nassau seems to be a challenge, you know. This is this is no rocket science. You know, if you're going to help, help. If you're not going to help, then stand aside. It's like there's no hope. Government is supposed to be a, a ray of hope. You know, the, the PM is, I guess, you know, he's got his hands full. But you can't send people to do, make decisions. They have to be able to make decisions. And our country operates too much like that. We got managers and can't, no one can make a decision. That's why we always suffering on the outer islands. People slept with you last night with babies, man. No shelter, but go. It's sad, man. Something has to be done. While Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis was in Abaco, he sought to assure evacuees that Bahamas Air flights are free and to just be patient. While logistical challenges hampering recovery efforts, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands telling us that while ideally there'd be an infinite number of professionals and volunteers combing hurricane-torn areas in search of dead bodies at this point, that just can't happen. In the mud, you still have flooding. You, it is almost impossible without special equipment to get into certain areas. And so, uh, given the fact that you have to clear the ports and the airport in order to bring in the equipment that you need, um, you know, you, you cannot risk the safety and life of the rescue personnel, uh, and, 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 and so this process is going to take uh, more time. However, he said they would try to do better. Up to the time of this newscast, the death toll had clocked 30, a figure Dr. Sand says has already exceeded any the Bahamas has ever seen. And as we've heard repeatedly in recent days, the grim expectation is that the number will only increase. Based on the fact that we know we have persons in the field uh, who have not yet been retrieved, uh, what that number is, um, nobody knows. But the process of retrieving uh, those deceased persons is a part of a deliberate um, organized search and rescue operation. Um, we can certainly ask the question whether it's uh, happening quickly enough, whether we have uh, dispatched persons uh, far enough into the various affected areas, and those are all legitimate questions. At the end of the day, that will ultimately determine the total number of people who would have succumbed from the storm. The bodies are being kept at the morgue at the clinic in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. Trailers are also being used for this purpose. This while many others remain missing. Meantime, international medical support for the injured is said to be increasing daily. On the ground are health officials from the U.S., Cuba, and the Netherlands. Well, over the past three days, 200 people were airlifted to New Providence to seek treatment at the Princess Margaret Hospital. According to its medical chief of staff, Dr. Carolyn Burnett Garraway, 33 were admitted. Most of the patients coming in now are what we call walking wounded. And so they just have minor complaints that we can see them, treat them, stitch the wounds, um, you know, drain the abscesses and infection, and then send them home on medication with follow-up. PMH had actually um, stopped elective surgery just to ensure we have adequate bed capacity because we weren't sure what to expect. And um, our clinics were also closed. So the staff that would have been assigned there, they came down to the emergency department and assisted. So it was more a redeployment of staff and also to send staff into the disaster zones. 
Now, the majority of those discharged have relatives living here in New Providence. They're able to stay there and recover. Initially, uh, the first day after the um, storm, well, when we got the all clear and could start bringing patients in, um, head injuries, crushed injuries, polytrauma, broken bones or fractures. And then in the second wave, we started getting persons with soft tissue injuries, um, skin problems, so infected wounds. And then we also had a number of uh, end-stage renal disease patients, so uh, that need dialysis. The dialysis in unit in Abaco was destroyed, so they had to fly all of those in so we could manage them here. Well, rapid assessment exercises were underway in Abaco and Grand Bahama today. The team, led by the National Emergency Management Agency, was expected to assess the damage on infrastructure and see how many people are displaced and inspect critical facilities. In turn, recommendations will be made to the government regarding relief, recovery, and reconstruction. Meantime, should you have inquiries regarding relatives who may have been evacuated from Abaco and Grand Bahama to the Princess Margaret Hospital, you're advised to call the National Emergency Management Agency, and those numbers are 322-6081. That's 322-6081. 6081 through 5. Further patients who have been treated and discharged from hospital but have no accommodations here in New Providence are being accommodated at the Kendall GL Isaacs Gymnasium. In the event you need to verify the location of discharged relatives, call 604-4219. 604-4275-604-4209 and 604-4203. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.